to another episode of Digital Oil and Gas. My name is Jeffrey Can, and uh, top of mind for operators in the oil and gas world today, by far, is the uh, importance of reducing emissions on work sites and to improve the productivity and quality of, of workmanship given the increasing pressures of regulation and pressures on uh, the various uh, financial um, uh, providers to the industry to reduce emissions everywhere and anywhere possible. And so it's important for the industry to explore every possible way to cut its emissions impact and to look for ways where those emissions can be reduced cost effectively and quickly. And one that I've discovered um, through my various uh, travels in the industry is the, uh, the presence of contaminants in products like drilling mud. And those contaminants have a significant wear effect on the uh, drilling equipment uh, and uh, the uh, pipes uh, used, drill casing. And if, if there was ways to kind of make that uh, more um, uh, in, uh, cleaner products working their way through the um, uh, drilling apparatus, it, it would have a positive effect on the industry. And I'm honored to be joined today by uh, Roger Simonson, who has developed a really innovative technology that targets this exact issue and, um, and, and have a conversation about what this all means and kind of show us uh, how this, uh, this technology works. Uh, so Roger, let me uh, welcome you to uh, Digital Oil and Gas today. Good to see you again, Jeffrey. Uh, quite enjoyed our last chat, so I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, we did two podcasts and um, the problems with podcasts, what I like about podcasts, they're quick and easy to do, but the problem with podcasts is that you have to visualize what we're talking about. And what we're going to do today is actually show some video where we can illustrate more precisely um, what this uh, technology does and what it's all about. Uh, but let me, just as to begin though, Roger, if you don't mind, if uh, just share a little bit about your, your journey to get to where you're at and, you know, why are you devoting... <laughs> Your, your life's work at this stage. You could do a lot of different things, go golfing, but you're devoting your life's work to solving this, uh, these problems in, in the industry. Well, over the last 20 years, we've uh, developed magnetic filtration technology that is highly effective in removing uh, both ferrous and non-ferrous contamination from all, all types of media, from crude oil, uh, refined products, uh, water, chemicals, even air. And we uh, come across a problem in the, in the drilling business for unusual uh, premature wear of uh, fluid ends in the high pressure pumps and the drill string components, the drill bit wearing out ahead of time. And uh, we did some testing uh, starting over a year ago and we, when we last chatted, we talked about this testing. Well, we've completed a major stage of it and the results have been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it's gonna have a, a major in, positive impact on the cost of uh, drilling wells. It'll reduce the cost for the drilling contractor and therefore for the operator. And it has to do with the drilling mud itself. The, the, and for those who are not familiar with uh, how, how the industry works, the mud is actually used to both lubricate the, the mechanical movement of uh, pipe casing and drill bit in, in downhole and to serve as a media to lift cuttings up through back through to the surface as the bit is uh, moving uh, and uh, grinding away at uh, the subsurface uh, formations. But you've mentioned what you've said, Roger, though, is, is that that somehow is giving rise to ferrous contaminations, steel, if you like, uh, that's contaminating the mud. Can you exp elaborate how, what's happening here? Like, why is this happening? Well, the, the drilling industry has um, increased the speed of drilling. There's higher temperatures, higher pressures, higher demand on the whole system. And I, I don't, from what the observations I've uh, seen in the industry, they, no one's really realized all the, especially with horizontal drilling, the pipe wear from the casing and the pipe contact all the way through for kilometers or miles underground. That, that wear contamination that's coming off, uh, along with the uh, iron that comes from the formation itself, comes back in and saturates the mud. And it's, it's tremendously small, mostly under four or five microns. Uh, in some of our testing, the majority of it was under one micron. 
Well, this stuff acts like sandpaper when it's being pushed through at high pressure and speeds through the whole drill string and into the drill bed. So people didn't understand that uh, when you shut down to, uh, to um, check the pipe thickness to see if it's suited uh, for the uh, drilling that you're doing, and, and or if it's, it's wore through or, or thinner, it has to be replaced. Well, all that metal is going somewhere and <laughs> it's finding a home in the drilling mud. And the last test we did, we had a volume of mud of 58,000 gallons. It's invert oil uh, base, um, which weighed a, a total of amount of 923,000 pounds. We removed in, in a matter, I believe, three days of constant running, we removed almost 14,000 pounds of iron wear contamination, <laughs> iron and steel. That's that exactly what's wearing their whole system. So once we got it cleaned out, uh, the, the test results identified a, on average a 53% increase in operational life of their fluid end components very successful very happy customer yeah you can imagine the uh, the, the the handling of that uh, drilling mud the uh, contaminant in it has to be uh, addressed uh, the the number of um, uh, incremental testing having to be done that you could avoid because you now are, are removing this uh, this this abrasive contaminant from between the walls of the uh, of the casing and the drill stem um, the, all of this adds up to significant uh, benefit to the to the operator. Where's the emissions angle here? If you, I mean, in 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 this. So when you're drilling, you're running generators. They're either running diesel fuel or they're running natural gas to uh, engines to turn their generators. Uh, when they're shut down for a component failure or a pipe check, um, you're you're in flat time. The, the generators are still running. So you're having emissions that you don't need. And also to cue in on one point, uh, natural gas leakage or fugitive emissions uh, are referred to uh, occur very highly in dirty natural gas going into a combustion engine. Uh, the, uh, the combustion is not efficient, therefore the, um, the uh, methyl, methane gas is exhausted out, therefore not good for the environment. And that can be uh, all resolved by cleaning that gas to a, a high level. And that means cleaning the black powder contamination down to and below one micron particle size. So what's the, how do people clean t the um, uh, drilling mud today, Roger? Are we, we, are we using a sort of a traditional mesh filter or a fabric filter and we're, we're cleaning it that way? No, it'd be virtually impossible to clean inverts or, or um, oil-based mud. Uh, you, traditionally, they use uh, shaker trays to take all the big pieces out uh, yeah. of the formation that's coming back. And also they uh, use what they call centrifuge filter systems. Uh. Well, unfortunately, they're only efficient down to about a 40 micron, maybe 30 micron if you're really lucky particle size. The damage is done by the contamination under 10 microns and mostly under one micron. So that flows right through a centrifuge. Yeah. No one actually had any idea how much of this metal was in their mud. So they knew there was some iron in there. So they would put what they call ditch uh, magnets in, but they're very unsafe to work with. They're heavy, cumbersome, they're hard to clean and they're made with a magnetic uh, element that's not very powerful. So you don't collect anything under 10 microns. You need a very, very powerful magnetic field to pull a, a submicron particle through a viscous uh, product like drilling mud. Yeah, I'm just trying to imagine the uh, the the force you have to apply uh, to be able to to withdraw such a tiny particle. Uh, it would have to be more than just more than just your standard fridge magnet uh, feature. <laughs> We're talking a magnetic capability here that's that's of some significant sub uh, capability. That's that's one of our biggest challenges is getting people to understand. We we our technology is a magnetic technology that uses magnets within it that creates ten times the magnetic field strength it would normally have. And that's what allows us to 
filter and remove very, very small particles through viscous oils like drilling mud or, or um, crude oil, etc. Every any any thick uh, product. Now, I, I, I said at the outset, I, I wanted to show a little video of what this actually uh, looks like. So I'm going to put this up on the screen. Roger, can you, I want you to do is just talk us through what we're seeing on the screen as we watch this, uh, this little video. Um, and so it starts off with a clear plastic container. What, what's in there? So we have uh, our magnetic filter elements inside this housing. Uh, we use a tempered glass so we could actually see the buildup of the black powder or contamination as it enters the housing. It's operating at uh, 25 kilometers an hour and we're simulating a natural gas uh, flow application. And we're introducing the black powder into the housing with the air. And you can see that it uh, collects on the elements where the magnetic fields are the strongest. And you can, you can see it build up very, very quickly. Now, how do, you, yeah. how do you clean the, or is this the, this is the cleaning process here, yeah. Yes, right now we have, we have a patented cleaning uh, process that uh, cleans all the black powder contamination off of the elements and allows them to be turned back into service very quickly. And that's, I guess that, that little shot was what the contamination actually is or what it looks like. That's correct. And how do you dispose of, um, once you have that uh, contamination now, it's like a powder or a grit. Um, how do you, I assume that's um, a, a landfill disposal or is there some other, something else you need to do with it to, to dispose of it? Well, on a drilling site, what we've observed, uh, the drilling contractor uh, mixes it with the uh, contamination coming out of the centrifuge and it gets taken for disposal or rehab somewhere in the system. Standard disposal, yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about this, uh, the, this non-productive time in a, in a drilling application. Uh, how, how much, any, any ideas to how much time is, is uh, on the dime here as to what operators are, are devoting to? Uh, you're running around trip, testing, testing the equipment, uh, cleaning it, repairing it. Has anybody ex come back to say this is how much savings they're they're getting? Well, um, on our on our first test, um, the the savings that were identified were uh, an extension of production values by fifty to fifty five percent on average. So that means drilling longer, which results in the, the well being drilled to uh, completion for their their side of the uh, process so that if you can save two or three days of drilling costs uh, that, that's a lot of money on land drilling rigs uh, I think you could be anywhere from 30 to seventy thousand dollars a day cost yeah it's your your day your day rate for your rig is going to be the driver there um, for, for sure how, how have you have you done some uh, some uh, studies to, to to prove out? Uh, the, uh, that the, the microns are the cause of the, the, the submicron particles are the cause of the abrasion? How, do, how, 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 how does an engineer, <laughs> you know, engineering world wants to sh show me the numbers, show me the math? How, how, what can you back that up with? Very good question. Uh, it, the, the testing backed it up very quickly. Once we got the, the mud clean, the uh, operational time increased up to 55% before they had to repair components and or replace uh, components in the drill string and the fluid ends on the high pressure pumps. Uh, very quickly identified that uh, the return on investment was, was happening right in front of them. Yeah, pretty easy to measure. If, if people want to learn more about um, this uh, technology and how it works, you, you showed a lab bench version there. The, one, the, the, the equipment behind you is all, of course, in, in, cased in steel. Can you just tell us what we're seeing behind you? Um, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but this is a, a clean mud housing here. Uh huh. And uh, this is what goes inside of it over here. These are the magnetic elements full of uh, contamination right now. It requires cleaning. Uh, we use it for a display. It's a, it's a, it's a large housing like uh, any other filter housing that you would have on site. Um, we have fully automated and semi-automated systems that uh, handle work as a kidney loop on the drilling mud reservoirs or tanks. 
and um, the, the, uh, the the obviously the scale um, and and making sure the equipment fits the the infrastructure at site. Uh, it doesn't look like it's particularly large. Um, I assume it's is it skid mounted when it's delivered to a to a customer if that's how they wanted to deploy it. Yes, absolutely skid mounted with a, uh, a containment uh, skid. So if there's any leakage, it, it collects in there. Um, we have two different sizes uh, for the main drilling rigs that are in service. Hmm. Uh, we're focusing now uh, working with the uh, deep drilling, the horizontal and offshore as well. This technology will save tremendous money in, in NPT or flat time for offshore uh, applications. Yeah, the, the drilling uh, requirement there, uh, the, the, the rates on those rigs are extraordinary. Uh, so <laughs> any time saving would be valuable. Uh, let me pop up a screen here that um, just provides some contact details, uh, so that um, uh, people, if they want to, uh, want, they want to uh, reach you. This is uh, where, where and how they would find you. Thank you, uh, Roger, for sharing with us uh, that uh, innovation. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Can. Tune in again for another episode of uh, Digital Oil and Gas. We'll talk about other innovations going on in the oil and gas industry. Bye for now.